welcome back to Tools and Track. In this episode, I fix all of the stuff that I got wrong in the last episode. Which was quite a significant amount of things wrong. But yes. to be fair, aye. Wait, uh, well, we'll find out. Let, let me show you what I mean. Uh, in case it's not immediately obvious what the problem is here, that is where this bar ties into this bar here, and that big, big, massive overhang is where it's there. I have made a mistake somewhere, and I've been looking at it for quite some amount of time, and I think I've worked out what I've done. I made a <laughs> of it. This is where this is where your feet will sit. Uh, and then from here forward it's engine well, This is where your fuel sat may not be like here somewhere. <laughs> so yes, this side I've measured up and is actually correct. Uh, it just seems to me there's a big like overhang here on this side. It's took me a good bit of measuring because this angle's right, that lens right, that lens is correct. And what, what's happened is we've got plus or minus two millimeter on the gaps here. So that is just out of alignment, quite simply. Which uh, just goes to show how little you need to get wrong for this to really go wrong. There's one degree out here to its respective uh, other side. So I need to chop all this off and start again. So we're going to use the McChesney clamps, keep everything else square, and then break off the spot wells and reposition this. Well, you mean reposition this? Yes, because... See, this is what I've been <laughs> We're going to break the spot welds here, we're going to break the spot welds here, and probably break the spot welds here, and pull this whole assembly in one degree, and then weld it all up again. Thankfully, we have the technology, we have the tools. We can, well, not this though, that's not right. So as I said, we're going to have to clamp down what we don't need to move. Now, there's going to be a bit of forces at play here. So I'm going to put a McChesney clamp here, a McChesney clamp here, and the chest clamp here, and that's going to keep that angle straight while we move this. These two bars are already clamped, and that's going nowhere. And I'm going to put one extra one here just to make sure that you know everything stays fairly square. So that's the plan. Um, while I'm going to do all this and get the mad robot stuff out, mechanical holder has a task. It's and time is... to disassemble the rest of the rear end, or the rest of the MX-5 actually, what's left of it. You've got this and then you've got the front end. I made a bit of a tactical decision with this. I don't think we're going to need any custom geometry measurements from this whatsoever. What's going to have to happen here is the back end's going to get strapped down. That will give us some more space and then we're going to re repeat the process with the front. Because the same rules apply, the front arms are getting custom made. All we'll need is the steering rack and a few other bits and bobs, but we'll come to that. So, as is mechanical holders want, it's time for some violence to be taken out on us. The mechanical holder trifecta, the grinder, the hammer, and the bus cut. Do I some assistance? Actually, it is something really helpful. Look at my finger wings, Lord! This line that it's sufficient. Metal action. That's quite nearly that. Just be good. Oh ho! Can I make a suggestion? You can on top? right off. It might, it might be worth just throwing the towel on here and starting this section again. No, it's not. Everything else is aligned, it's just getting these two pulled in. Just you go f***ing bar stuff and I'll do the thing. I can't, you've got my key tool. Tommy, can I borrow you? Absolutely. You put your foot in that up, it's going to rough you off. Yep. Did you die? No. No, I think you just rub your way across that. And the bolt's not moving. Here's the challenge. Um, big, 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 long bolt with not on the end, which holds the lower, the, the lower arm. Yeah, it's upside down. The lower arm onto the hub. Um, got the nut off by grinding off the end of the bolt, so there was nothing for it to really cling on to. However, the nut that the bolt is not going to come out. So, in light of the fact that we've had a dismal failure with traditional methods, we're going to take the grinder and cut a slit across here on the lower arm and then effectively feed the whole lot out um, because that's pretty much it if you want to retain the hub. Don't buy an old MX5 again. What I've done here is secure this side down, so that's now 90 degrees. That is there to there, 90 degrees. 
What I'm going to do is repeat the same gear. I probably need you to hold something while I nip this down here. I'm not wearing McChesney clamps. <laughs> if you're a McChesney and you can provide clamps, I'm not like six years so should be should be great, mate. Um, no, what we'll do is. Uh... Oh, I can smell more than rubber. Aye, that is a deep and pleasant smell. Yeah. Ah, there's a bush on here, isn't there? Aye, don't worry about it. I think by this point, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Try this technique of yours and failed miserably at turning this. So, boys and girls, damn, I was hoping you were going to fail there. <sighs> As if I would ever fail. Right, now that I've got this side done, uh, I'm going to take some of these blocks and I'll put it over that side, secure that, get that welded. And then instead we'll do some serious welding, some proper weld this all up so we're ready to lift it off, flip it over, weld the other side, put it back, flip it back over where it should be. And then start adding it. Right, yes, mate, I just need to turn the whole thing upside down. That's the two sides up. Sort test. Aldi gun. Wow, I did it. I'm actually quite impressed. That is insert platitude here. Wow. I should probably hang on to them, eh? I would like to think so. I'm gonna have fun editing this to make it look professional. Nothing I ever do is professional. Doesn't come out in this side quite as easily. First reading device. There you go. Item two in the hobby tool and drive actor. Go on, big boy. Get that tuck. Look at your tag in here. Oh, this one was fast. Have a light. Right, if you do this, I'll be mega Okay, so we've made good progress. The rear end is now in bits, specifically two hops, the diff, the drive shafts, the bits we wanted to re retain. However, the bottom arm connects in through a big bolt, like yay big, I don't know, nine inch or something. It's, it's, uh, I'm not going to it. Right, the reason for this is that the center section of it that runs through the hub is exposed to the elements. So it's coated in chlamydia. Chop off both sides of the bolt outside of the hub which leaves just the stud in the middle and then rattle it out with a persuading device and a chisel? No. Okay, so not for bash. The reason you wouldn't want to do that, and it is a, a, a normal gesture and you would think in principle it works, if you start hammering that stump over where that bolt used to be, it's going to start mushrooming out. Mm. So the more you hammer it, the wider it's going to get and the more it's going to actually gel itself into that gap. So no, what I suggest we would do is we will probably run a seam cut down where the old bush part was, get the old retaining like, inner bush parts off, so all we're left with is bolt, drown it in penetrant, start applying heat and see if we can actually get it to crack and Whoa, move. Heat. This is exciting, I'm not used to it yet. See, you know, it's all about the fun in this. <coughs> I gave you this some pads. <laughs> also, I mean, we'll, we'll see. Are you ready? What I succeeded in doing was cutting my balls. 
Jag tror att det var f***ing smart Nej, absolut f***ing Nej, let's get this Fuck it, oil look at me So we've gave it a good um, persuading with the persuader and we've got, we've got it to move so that's good. If it's moving it's going to come out, however just to punctuate the point about mushrooming, at the top of that's already gone, completely gone. That will not clear this bolt hole so we're just going to lock this off with the grinder. First I'm going to just one last check to make sure this will spin. There's a mushroom, yep. Yeah. So I'm going to chop that off, then it'll come out. And then I'm going to have to open it with my new f***ing bolt to get this back on. Hey! Hey, I say a f*** your mama! I'm not going to lie, I am, I am more impressed than I have ever been. Dude! Oh, really stupid! <laughs> you f***ing idiot. Go back the way you came. <laughs> what the f? There we go. <laughs> well, mechanical holders dicking about behind me, I'm going to start dressing down these welds. Hey, Tommy! Hey, Tommy! Tommy! I'm your dad! Right, we're all welding. Well, not all welded, but we've got a lot of welding done. Every top part here has been welded and dressed back, and there's a lot of welds going down the sides, as much as I can do, uh, but the constraints of being tied to a bench. So the next thing we need to do is take all my clamps off, flip it all around, clamp it down again so it's nice and flat, and start welding the other side. This is going to be a lot. Right, do, some, do some stretches, do some lunges, do some exercises to get prepared for this. How many fingers are you going to use? One? I, I'll go. Are you going to one? Ah, you probably could. No, I can do one side. Oh, no, wait, man. Ah, there we go. You can go race car. Okay, <laughs> 180 degrees. Round it goes. Some say I might have made a mistake here. And if you look down at this gap, you'd be right. So what's went wrong here? Well, actually, nothing at all. What's happened, if you think about it, we've done all our welding on the top. So everything up here has went and pulled up because there's only one side of this entire base that's been welded. So again, the need for the McChesney clamps is, we need to bolt this down, make it completely flat again, and then once we've welded the bottom side out, it'll level out. Always good to be aware that things will flex and distort on the welding. As long as you counter for it, and we'll be fine. Now you can see why I was in a big deal about getting this table flat to begin with. Because if that's going to be the data, you can see how much it can fall out. Let's see just how deep this rabbit hole goes. Oh, up to my f***ing elbow. Get the red pills out. Oh. While we do this, the kind of loader is going to start taking the front apart. Chop, chop. Well, not chop, chop. This is literally not a chop, chop. It's anything but a chop, chop. If you're on an MX5, any and B generation, God help you, should you ever need to do anything to it, other than get it and it? Because it's just made of us, the entire thing. Every single bowl, every bit, everything for it is just rust. Well, that's far more compact. It's like the less grab, glamorous uh, grinding all of these flat again because this will be the bottom of the car and it needs to go flat on the bench for us to start doing pickups to go up the way. So. Yay for dust! Okay, 
nobody needs to see me grinding more stuff at this point. I'm going to finish this off and then in the next episode we're going to flip it up, round about, and start welding up the way. So, thanks for watching. I uh, hope you're enjoying this. For everyone that's joined Patreon, thank you so much. Really appreciate the support. For everyone that hasn't, link at the bottom. Get on it so we can get this car built because it's not cheap. Uh, do the subscribe thing here, do the like thing here, do all that magic, and we will see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys.